Hey folks, Chris here. Welcome to another episode of Cardboard Dragon Reviews. Finally a new episode. Apologies for the delay, but life happened and I got married. So, back to uh, board gaming. But today we're taking a look at a game simply called The Game, which is a subtitle in German. Uh, I believe it's Play As Long As You Can. Um, this is a card game for one to five players, recommended for ages eight and up. It takes about 20 minutes to play. And this is an interesting game because it's been nominated for the Spiel des Jahres Award uh, for 2015, which is the German Game of the Year Award, which is a pretty a big deal. Um, but this is a game I had never heard of until the nominations came out, so I decided to uh, pick it up and take a look. Essentially, this game is sort of themeless. Y you're just trying to um, lay down cards in piles that are either descending from 100 or ascending up to 100 and getting rid of all of these cards. So it's actually a very simple game. Let me go ahead and show you how it's played and then I'll give you my final thoughts on the game. Okay, so this game is actually a very simple game. The first thing we need to do is deal out a number of cards. Depending on the number of people we're playing with, that changes. This solo here, it's eight cards. Uh, two players at seven and three, four, five at six cards, and we keep those secret from the other players. Uh, so the deck is numbered um, two through 99 with no repeating number. So there are 98 cards in this deck. And we're trying to play these all onto the field here. And we need to set up these four uh, non-normal uh, cards here, these abnormal cards, unique cards. Uh, you see they come in two types. So essentially we're going to be playing cards below them. Um, the first type here we see as a number one with an arrow going up to 99. This means that the first card we play in one of these columns <coughs> has to be bigger than one. So for instance, uh, I could play a 79 here because 79 is bigger than one. But now, from now on, if I want to play on this column here, I have to play a card that's bigger than 79. So you see I've kind of hurt myself because I can't play cards lower than 79 on this pile anymore, with one exception, which we'll get to later. So this column is the same thing. It's just another one of those piles for you to build off of. And these two here are the opposite. You have to play a card lower than 100 uh, here. So I could play the 99, which would be the best possible play. And then every card from there on has to be lower than 99. So I could put a 9 on top of it, which would be a terrible play because now everything would have to be lower than 9 and there are only a few cards lower than 9. So the way a turn works is on your turn, you have to play... Um, at least two cards. You can play more if you want. You could play your entire hand and then you fill back up to your maximum hand size and then if there's another play it's the next player's turn or if you're playing a solo game you start uh, your next turn. So for instance on my first turn here I could lay down there you go 99 and I could go 94 and then I could stop, say I'm done, and pick back up to holding eight cards. Now once this pile runs out, this pile here, you still haven't won the game. You've played, a, I believe, an excellent game, the rules book calls it, but you still haven't beaten it. You still have to try and get rid of all the cards in your hand. But once this pile is gone, you only have to play one card in your turn. You can still play as many as you want, but only need to play one. And that's the entire game. Um, there's one exception to how you can play cards, uh, and that involves what I call jumping. I'm not sure what it's technically called. But you can play cards going in the opposite direction if they're uh, a difference of exactly 10. So for instance, counting down um, from 100, we have a 79 here. So normally the next card I have to play has to be a 78 or less. However, I can play the 89 on top of that, which is beneficial to me because I brought the pile back up to a higher number. And then I could play the 99 on top of the 89. And now I brought it back up to what is essentially its maximum 
uh, potential. So those are some kind of combos uh, you can pull off. So for instance, I could have done this a little better because I have a 94 in my hand. I could have gone, I could have played the 94 first, then the 79 because that's lower, then the 89, then the 99. So essentially got rid of four cards instead of only playing the 99. And you can go in the other direction too on these piles here. Um, you're trying to build upwards in this one. So if I was at a 99, I could play the 89 and the 79 to bring myself back in the opposite direction, which gives me some breathing room. So that's the basic game. Um, the only difference between solo and a team is that obviously you have teammates who once you've made your two or more moves and you draw back up, you pass to them and then they get to do this too. Now, the rules say you are not allowed to communicate specifically about what cards you have in your hands. You can't name numbers. So typically the communication is like if I had these uh, 89 or I had the 79 in my hand, let's say in the 89 was sitting here, I could tell my partner or partners don't play here because I can jump this. And so they know that they probably shouldn't play here unless they, unless they absolutely have to. Or I could say, I'm going to wreck this pile my next turn because I have nothing else to do. So go ahead and trash it too if you need to. And play cards that normally wouldn't be good. Because you're stuck with the cards you have in your hand in this game. So that's a very quick overview of how to play. But those are all the rules. So let me go ahead and give you my final thoughts on the game. Alright, final thoughts time for the game. So this is uh, only available right now, as far as I know, in German. Uh, so I had heard about this. I don't know if I was on Board Game Geek or, or or where I was, and saw it was nominated for the German Game of the Year, which piqued my interest. And kind of hearing people talk about it, it sounded to me like it was going to resemble another game that we play a lot around here that we really like, and that's Hanabi. Um, but that's really not the case. This game reminds me more of Solitaire more than uh, any other game. So, first of all, uh, the theme of this game, there isn't really a theme, it's just a numbered card game, which is totally fine. It's just like something like Lost Cities, it's just really a numbered card game, that's totally fine. But when you see this box sitting on the shelf with a name of the game, and this like skull thing on it, which is also, hopefully you can see this on all the cards, gives this like horror vibe to it. Now people are saying, I've read online, there's some kind of weird occult thing with this game. I don't know if that's true at all, but if you were walking around in a store or picking out a game, this theme, this imagery, probably would turn some people off. This weird skull stuff. Like this is a perfect opportunity to have like some kind of super colorful game. And said they went in the total opposite direction. It doesn't bother me so much because I like horror stuff, but I can totally see that turning off a whole group of people who otherwise might have played this. As far as the quality of the game, like I said, this game reminds me of Solitaire, and I enjoy playing it by myself, and that is the only way I enjoy playing this game. Because your communication, when you play with more uh, with other players, pretty much boils down to don't play here or you can play here because I got to trash that on my turn. And when you have m even more players, the communication just seems so kind of random because you're stuck with the cards in your hand. And there's often, I find, not so much strategy you can employ when you're playing with multiple people and you can't see what their cards are because you're not allowed to share that information. Um, so playing it solo, you can totally start planning some combos and seeing, well, I have a 79, 89, 99 in my hand, and I can try and fill in, get collect some cards to fill in some gaps there so I can make a big play one turn. That's a lot harder to do with other people because you can't really communicate that to them uh, in a way that I think doesn't violate the rules. So... This game is a 5 out of 10 for me. I enjoy playing it by myself because it's like solitaire uh, to me. But boy, nominated for Game of the Year with all the other great games that have come out. That's 
kind of surprising to me. Um, and I, I guess I was expecting another Hanabi out of this, which I enjoy very much, but that's not, not at all what it is. Again, I like it solo, not so much uh, with other people, just because it seems boring and the communication is so limited that I'd rather just play it by myself anyway, or play any other number of, of games. So that is the game. And until next time, this has been Chris for Cardboard Dragon Reviews. Please like and subscribe for uh, more videos. We'll get them up more regularly now that all the craziness with getting married is over. Uh, and until next time, keep your dice on the table.